You're still not recording? One more time. Well, that must be what happens right. at the dyno. All right guys, so we're checking out this here. We got ourselves a torque plate for the flywheel. It actually has the, the bearing pilot bearing yeah. integrated into it, so it's actually raised to the surface instead of sitting behind it into the factory holes back here or into the flywheel relief back in here. Um, that's actually to make up for our, our adapter plate where we would lose the snout length to right. center into the factory location. So yeah, Man, it's that's sick. pretty sweet. Yeah. It's kind of fun unboxing this. This is the first time we've had it out, so you guys are kind of seeing it with us. So this is tight. We gotta hold some stink, huh? Pretty stuff, pretty stuff. We're gonna go ahead and see how it all fits on our on our engine. And do you get bolts too, or do we just use our old uh, bolts? It did not come with bolts, so it looks like it used. So we gotta see. If we use factory bolts or we gotta get 23s or dots and the difference in Honda bolts is this one here is a 23 and there's a little bit there's this much length it'll zoom oh whatever but there's this much length I'll show you a dot too just so you can see all the different flywheel bolts Honda does but you just check them by pushing it through there and that looks a little long, so it's probably going to be a dotted well, bolt as well. Well, we still have our shim plate. Oh, yeah. We'll torque check plate, it with the so torque actually... plate. So, <clears throat> let's check one more time. That was a good point. Yeah, so now that's a better length. So, when they're too, lo too long, they bottom out in the crank and never tighten up. So, that looks great. It's a big torque plate. Can't look at the bearing and grade oh, it on sweet, it. Dude. Yeah. It's tight. Which way does it go? Bearing out or in? Bearing out. To make up for our adapter plate thickness, yes. That's definitely looking fresh, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And look at that. Show sure enough. You're the master. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's little things in life. When your clutch says master on it, you just know. Oh, whatever. But as you guys know at home, man, Clutch Masters is really just on the cutting edge of clutch technology and stuff. They just did uh, throw-out bearings for Jamie's SRT4, so now we got rid of the clutch forks for SRT4. So if you guys need... The pivot ball. Yeah, and the pivot ball. So if you guys ever... If you got SRT4s at home and want a good kit, Jamie just... Worked with them and came up with something good. Uh, they tested it on a car already, someone else's yeah, car. Yeah, tested on one at a shop down the street. Yeah, and so. They said it worked good, so they sent me one. So, we'll get that in the curse real soon. Nice. Yeah, and all you guys at home with SRT4s, I'd get one. Because that, oh, that is always a problem. Oh, yeah. Right. Voila. Good enough to mock up. So they label the, the plates with letters so we know which plate, which disc, which stuff all goes in the which spot. So we got A. A, B, C, and then that should say D, and then it also say flywheel side probably. That little yellow sticker yellow one, yeah. says flywheel side, so that gives us the and order of says, ah, pressure, pressure plate, plate side. Plate. So it gives us the order to put them all in. So we're not geniuses, we just can read. <laughs> I could probably speed read. That I could not do, I'm a very slow reader. The trick to speed reading is you read the top paragraph, skim the middle, and read the bottom paragraph. <laughs> Already? Yep. Man, look at that. That's tight. Tight like a dragon. Like a dragon? You Last say dragon. Tight like, oh yeah, I got you, yeah, I got you. You don't have little kids anymore, bro. 
Well, they do tigers in like kung fu stuff too. Because you got the tiger claw. <laughs> so things we'll probably still do and, and go through. We'll probably run through the engine. We'll probably pull the crankshaft and everything and we'll balance everything to this new clutch too. Just so when we're shifting it, you know, 11, 11, 5, that everything is just singing. So I think that's kind of an important thing we're going to do. So No vibration. Yeah. No bad vibrations. <clears throat> See your ratchet? Oh, whatever. He's way ratchet. It's really sweet, man. Yeah, it goes together like butter. Did a good job. That just well, looks it took, tight. What, five days or something? Yeah. It was the shipping that took forever. Yeah, shipping took longer than they getting. shipped the day after we put the order in. But I mean, even the side view of this thing. So, the minivan, we're going to do a triple disc or maybe something like this down the road because the weight of that thing does not hold the power. Now we're going to have a light car, but we're going to have a lot of power and a lot of bite in the tire, so the combination can just go one way or another. We'll have uh, uh, also a clutch tamer in the car, which also helps us leave. And then that's about the only time we'll need the clutch. The rest of it will be clutchless shifting, so. So we'll slide it out. And then it'll be locked up and then go. Should work. We got the throw bearing that this whole section here will bolt into the transmission. So those four bolts there. Oh man, it's even bigger. The lines will come out over here. Yeah. Whatever. We're just inspecting. But all this will go in the into the bell housing. So I believe gets this rid of all the old goes stuff to the actual transmission. Yeah, it looks like it does. It, it guides the bell housing onto. Yeah, that's what I was just so noticing because the back side because it's this lip right here. Yep. Yeah, I was just kind of noticing that. So you're learning with me. <laughs> See how this all goes together. But I mean, that's just exactly what we need. That's like perfect, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Put the power down. Put the power down. And slide it out just to get the good oh, 60 foots because we, we will you know we run in 10 and a half tire drag radial drift tires like whatever showing us gonna be jack of all trades snow tires, snow tires. ice racing <laughs> <laughs> showing up showing up we're going ice racing but rad we'll have to switch to e85 instead of methanol it'll be too cold out for that it's always a good time for methanol. <laughs> the great thing is that your fuel your fuel won't freeze. That's true, that's true. <laughs> it might be a little hard to start, but once she's running. Start running corn. <laughs> yeah. The reason we're running methanol is we like things to be clean. We want to pass emissions and be good for the environment. So I suggest you all run. <laughs> I suggest everybody run methanol. We might Dude, burn 40% more, like but it's... Crying. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Nice. <laughs> We're going to have to take show enough to do emissions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll take it to my we driver. It the whole way there. Yeah, we can. Flip these switches and just pull it right onto the dyno, please. It's great. Try not to grind the gears. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, Star looks lines up. Yeah. yeah. It actually looks completely like a factory S2000 clutch, except for the pilot bearing. Yeah. Plate. I'm impressed. Although they might have. I think they also added this right here to the friction surface disc. This. Oh yeah. They just stepped that out, so they stepped this. Yeah, that's how they got it done so quick. That's awesome. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Probably shouldn't record this part. Why? SFI, just, we're not allowed to modify just, these. It's yeah, yeah. physically in the rule book. Don't you worry about it. This is what life really is.
Okay, we had to drill those because we got an eight millimeter bolt instead of a six. Sean got it on lock. That'll hold the, the throttle bearing little bracket. We've, we found out how this all kind of goes together. So this has got these countersunk um, holes. So we've got a, I ran out and bought some bolts. Look like that. They're just gonna fly and maybe flush with the the bell housing. We might even have to work on the I think I have paper to take that powder little. coating out. I got it. Yeah. I was just I just noticed that when I dropped that bolt in. Heads aren't flush. Yeah. So. We need to get that head flush, and that'll drop into these four holes, which corresponds with these, these outside four holes. And then this little taper here goes right past this on the snout, so I'm just sitting there like this with a plate sandwiched between them. So, figure this out, it's coming together. So these have that little lip on them. Shoshan's gonna just give that thing a little. All right. And what tool is that, Sean? What is that thing? That's a countersink bit. Yeah. So a little countersink bit. Now just, let's let them test it. Just really cleaning the powder coat off. The powder coat yeah. gave it a thickness. So oh. Yeah. See now it's not flush. That's like snagging a fingernail. Yeah. That's like. Well, what's your Adobe lock? Almost there. Almost there, yeah. Looks good. I think that'll help a lot. Yeah, it's getting it. So you found an issue bolt-wise? Yeah. So here's our depth. So here's our mounting surface of the bell housing to here. Yeah. So here's our actual measured depth we have to work with for this cavity. And <coughs> we need to keep these bolts, but they're past my depth. So these bolts are the problem? Yeah, but the only bolt I have is still a little long. But just a fuzz. So these need to be almost a f something shorter head-wise. Yeah, I need pretty much this, but I need more thread because it needs to engage right. a quarter inch more. Right. <clears throat> So we need a head more like this that's just a little I can shorter. I can grind, grind it, it, yeah. So. Or on this, you, they have like button heads. Oh yeah, they got button heads. Do they got button heads? Yeah, that's what we'll get. Allen button heads might be... No, that'd be perfect. Because those definitely... Yeah, like an Allen button head would be yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. So, I agree with that. I need that thread pitch, that length of engagement, but... Four more of those, there. okay. Before Off to get more bolts. <coughs> hardware, hardware, hardware. Because then that'll tuck in here. Right. And that'll go up. And then from there it's just measuring our distance and shimming the actual. You know, yeah, pilot. Okay. Cool. All right. I'll run go get that then and get that done. Thank you. Yep. Sorry. Sorry. Wish I would have seen that before you ran into the bolt store the first time. But. Hey. So we go. It's kind of one of those things I couldn't see until we bolted it in there. Yeah. Well, it just thinks we got a little more head than we wanted. Oh well, we'll get it. Yep. So. Sean, Sean's gonna put a couple studs in here so it just helps guide the transmission on and gives a little bit of support when. Helps hold the plate too. Yeah. Ooh, look at that, huh? We're getting somewhere. That's looking good. Oh, whatever. These guys just make such good products. That helps a ton with the space underneath that we needed, so. Yeah, just look at that bolt with yeah. the washer. How yeah, far that sticks out. The difference. And the you see it a lot. Clearance right we there. need. 
<laughs> that was definitely right half of that bolt needed to go bye bye. Right. Check that top one again. Just to see a good image of it. Oh yeah, look at that. Just enough. Just barely enough. Dang. Show sure enough, we got the clearance. Show sure enough, we got it. A couple hardware store runs. <coughs> I need to get rid of this nasty cough. But getting there. It's starting to get winter here real fast. Yeah, something's holding it. It's gotta be the head of those bolts, right? Well, hopefully we got a mark now. If not, we can paint marker them in. Yeah. Put four marks. Oh, it's the heads of the bolts. What else could it be? There's this nothing this else. Now? Oh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, there's this part too. That depth could be just a little not straight. Yep. Barely catching like the roll edge, you know? Yeah. I mean? Mm hmm. Because otherwise, it looks like it should fit exactly. I mean, at least those marks were the exact same. Down the money. Way bigger than that. Well, I might have a colored paint marker. We could dab some yeah. stuff on. I should be able to get just the tip of the bolts too, like one of them. See that edge four. 
I can take kind of, some of that out. Yeah, that's what I think too. I mean, I don't see anything else. Yeah, because really. it's just this face. Yeah, is just a touch longer. Longer than this. So we just used the paint marker to give us that. It looked about like look, but the look, to 80, the bolts did not touch. Yeah, we're good there. Yep. The length of that snout to there. Yep. Just a fuzz. Just a fuzz, man. The lathe would have just done one more quick turn. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> one more oops. But you try to make this stuff precise, and that's just how it goes sometimes. Getting her there. Yeah, she's close, close. Polishing her out. Yeah, slowly. It's the standoff plate. Just doesn't quite jive 100% with that. Yeah. That looks flat to me. All right, I got it now. It didn't look like it had any rock to it or anything. Nice. Now if it's inside there, we're good to go. Whoa, look at that ratchet go! For sure, for so sure, sure. What, what he's doing, we're setting this up to where he can measure for how many shims are gonna go inside the throttle bearing. Hopefully none. Hopefully none. Oh, either way, it is dropping. And um, Clutch Masters included a big stack of shims in the kit. So, we got what we need. Showing up. Showing up. <laughs> yeah. All right, on the Clutch Masters throw bearing, you can see all you do is take it and you push out from the back side. You can see it slide out. Now that's out. Now we got a spot to put the shims. Yep, that's it. All right, as I hold the straight edge to the back of the bell housing, he's gonna measure from the fingers to the straight edge. The fingers of the pressure plate. Okay. We have 3.5, 89 millimeters. Yep. All righty. Now we got the hydraulic slave bolted back in and we need to measure pretty much from the front mounting surface of the bearing there to where it'll actually sit on the forks to the backside mounting surface of the transmission. So I went ahead and got a couple blocks here that stand up taller than the flat surface of the tranny so I can actually get them to sit against this so it'll be a flat measuring surface. Look on, down in through there, you can see that the bearing is now riding on there. I mean, woo, woo, mega round. <laughs> and we're gonna take a flat edge across our mounting surface. It have to say LSB. Gonna go ahead and measure on down into there. And we got 3.289. So now we want to take our measurement that we had taken before, millimeter. which was a 3.535. And then we want to take what we just measured, our 3.289. And we need 150,000 there again. So we add 0.150 to that, which it gives us 3.439. So then we subtract that number from our first number and we get 0 0.096 thousandths. So that is what we need thickness of a shim. I went ahead and grabbed the whole kit of shims they got here. 
This one looks pretty darn close. And we have a .95, so I mean, we're... What the hell that measurement is? It's, it's <laughs> close. Yeah. <laughs> it's right there. What is that, 10 thousandths? Yeah. <laughs> so we're one ten thousandths off. So that's close enough. Because the air gap, they want .150 to .20. Yeah. Thousands. So we're well within that range. So yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll pop that shim in there. Pop that out. Slide our shim on. There we go. Now, with our new shim in, make sure that's all the way down. Double check our new measurements. All right. We have 3.375 gives us an air gap of 0.16 and we need a 0.15 to 0.2 so we're All definitely right. on the perfect tight size. Cool. Mm -hmm. One step closer. Guys check them out. Clutch Masters. Products work good. Now you know how to set it up. Whether it's on your Honda engine or your Subaru or whatever. That's it. Anytime you use external throw bearing, this is what you do. Jamie's, like I said, if you guys got SRT4s, Jamie has the throw bearing setups for those. So you can get rid of that, that fork and pivot ball crap, make it work good, so yeah. right on. Some things I got coming up, I gotta run down to uh, the Scion, the all motor Scion that we're doing, uh, Huey, and I gotta finish pulling the flywheel off. I made that puller, I just haven't got down there to do it, and JJ's Guys are wondering where the hell I've been. Uh, it's been crazy. Um, we got uh, streetcar takeover this weekend and then uh, Cleas and Cars in Florida, followed by World Cup Finals, which I hope you guys are all going to. There's not another race like it, it's pretty awesome. And then uh, Cleas and Cars, Florida. So come out, join us, kick it, have a good time. And uh, sure enough, we'll be working on this project and trying to get it done. All right, guys, take it easy.